safeguards and security controls for all local HMIS were published in the Federal Register by HUD in 2004. In March 2010, HUD updated the data standards revised notice, incorporating additional data collection requirements for the Homelessness Prevention and Rapid Rehousing Program, or HPRP, funded under the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. The current HMIS data standards published in 2014 were developed by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, HUD, and the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs in the effort to provide communities with baseline data collection requirements and to also assist the common goal of ending homelessness. How many cases of powdered milk do we have, Herb? Well, we only have seven last time I counted. In this video series, we'll go over the data standards. This is just another tool at your disposal. Have you checked the HUD data standards tutorial? Check it out. It's a multi-segmented tutorial that details certain data elements that must be collected and entered into a continuum of care HMIS. Each segment covers one or a few of the most crucial or complex data elements when, who, and how to collect the data, as well as where to report it. The link is also in the description below. Ready? Let's do this. Excellent! Well, don't forget, the golden rule works there, just as it does anywhere else. First, of course, know your job. Check your assessments today. Here's an easy exercise to check the pulse of your data. For every enrollment, you should have an entry assessment with the same date. If your client has been enrolled for over one year, make sure there's a during program enrollment or annual assessment recorded no more than 30 days before or after the entry date. If your client is gone or you haven't seen your client in over 90 days, exit the enrollment. That exit assessment closes the chapter and provides more input. If you have two entry assessments or two exit assessments, that's what we call duplicate data it needs to be cleaned. Please delete one assessment. Point one, name. The red glyph indicates that first and last names are required, middle names and suffixes are optional. Obviously, the more information you input prevents chances to duplicate records. There is also a name quality indicator with five answers to choose from. You must choose, but choose wisely. 3.2, social security number. The social security number offers a unique identifier critical to producing an accurate, unduplicated local count of homeless persons accessing services covered by HMIS. By the way, Beldar, you still haven't given me your social security number. My social security number. I, I am sorry, I keep forgetting. We understand it's a challenge for some projects, but so is ending homelessness. You do have a number, don't you? Of course, I am a citizen of this planet. Please. <laughs> Consider the phone.
3.3 Date of Birth The date of birth is used to calculate the age of person served at time of project entry or at any point during project enrollment. It supports the unique identification of each person served. 3.4 Race Race is used to count the number of persons who identify themselves within one or more of five different racial categories. <laughs> Three point five ethnicity. Ethnicity is used to count the number of persons who do and do not identify themselves as Hispanic or Latino. I mean, you don't look like you're. I mean, you don't look like you're from there. Staff observations or input are not to be used here. Three point six gender. Record the self-reported gender of each client served. Again, this answer is not what the case manager thinks should be recorded. Users should be sensitive to persons who do not identify on the gender binary. 3.7, veteran status. Record whether or not the client was a veteran. This does not include inactive military reserves or the National Guard unless the person was called up to active duty. This question is not available to anyone under 18 years of age. Now I know! And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! 3.8. Disabling condition. This element used to be collected just for adults, not anymore. This data element is to be used with other information to identify whether a client meets the criteria for chronic homelessness. Record whether the client has a disabling condition based on one or more of the following. You still here? Oh.